Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is discuss the current situation with CentOS 8. CentOS itself is a celebrated and popular Linux distribution that is found on servers all over the world. And Linux administrators enjoy the fact that CentOS is built from the sources of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which means that they're able to benefit from the power of an enterprise Linux distribution without having to pay for a support contract. At least that's how it's been until now, because recent news from CentOS is that they're going to be focusing on stream and ending support for CentOS 8 a lot sooner than originally planned. In fact, CentOS 8 was supposed to have 10 years of support, but unfortunately support is ending in just two months. And this situation has caused CTOs and administrators a lot of stress because many of them are trying to figure out at the last minute which distribution to migrate all of their servers over to. And some enterprises out there, as you probably already know, have thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of servers or more. So switching from one distribution to another is no easy task. So what I'm going to do in this video is go over some of the options that you have at your disposal for fixing this situation. And I'll give you the pros and cons of each. But before we get into that, I'm going to give you a brief history lesson about what has actually happened so far with CentOS, and then we'll go over the options. Like I mentioned earlier, CentOS is a Linux distribution that's been an industry favorite for quite a while now. And I can definitely understand why. As a distribution that's focused on the enterprise, it's rock solid. Why is it so rock solid? Well, up until now, CentOS has been built from the sources of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL for short. So all of the proven stability of Red Hat Enterprise Linux has made its way into CentOS in every release. In fact, even companies that do purchase Red Hat subscriptions often use CentOS as a testing ground on which to build solutions that they eventually plan to move to RHEL. This is why sometimes you'd see CentOS in development environments and RHEL in production. CentOS 8 was launched originally in September of 2019, and it was yet another great release for the distribution. At the time of release, it was planned to be supported all the way to May of 2029. And in that sense, it was seen by many companies as a distribution they could deploy on their servers and benefit from regular patching for 10 years. Or so we thought. Also in 2019, a new version of CentOS was released, and that version was intended to be an alternative version of CentOS that was built with a rolling model. A rolling distribution is one that continually receives updates and evolves over time. The intent for CentOS Stream was to give everyone a preview of what's to come in RHEL, so that way developers and administrators can start testing out the next generation of Linux technologies today. But in December of 2021, Red Hat and CentOS revealed that they were pulling the plug on CentOS 8 and instead focus on CentOS Stream. As a part of this decision, it was also announced that eight years was being removed from the previously promised support period for CentOS 8. So instead of support ending in May of 2029, CentOS 8 instead reaches end of life at the end of December 2021. Now, one thing that's really ironic about this situation is that this news only applies to CentOS 8. CentOS 7 will still be supported. Now, normally I tell everyone to not wait to upgrade their operating system to a newer and more supported version, but this is one of those rare times where procrastination might have paid off because, well, if you're running CentOS 7, definitely don't move to CentOS 8 because you'll still have support with CentOS 7 for some time to come. Needless to say, the news sent quite a few administrators and CTOs in a frenzy to figure out what to do at the last minute. Migrating to a new operating system is not a quick task for most companies, so this situation put quite a few people in a very stressful situation. So we're aware now that CentOS 8 is reaching end of life at the end of December of 2021, but what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that every installation of CentOS 8 in your company is going to stop working? Well, no, at least not right away. In all fairness, if you had a CentOS 8 server that was not even connected to the internet at all, 
then technically it'll keep running for however long the hardware is good for. But being without support from the vendor on a distribution, that's a huge problem. As new vulnerabilities are discovered, patches will not be made available to CentOS 8 after December 31st. And this means that your company will be increasingly vulnerable to CVEs the longer they wait to migrate. So, what should companies do? Now, when it comes to CentOS Stream, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a fine distribution. So, on a technical level, maybe it's something that you should consider checking out. But there's two problems with Stream, though, that I need to address, and the first of which is what I've mentioned about the support period. I mean, that support period ending in less than 10 years, way less than 10 years, because, you know, they promised 10 years. They should have given us 10 years. And the fact that they pulled the plug on support early has sent a lot of IT administrators and CTOs into a frenzy to try to figure out what to do at the last minute. And that also harms trust. I mean, if they're going to pull the plug on CentOS 8, are they eventually going to pull the plug on CentOS Stream? What if you move to CentOS Stream right now and then find out later on that you have to switch yet again? And the other problem with CentOS Stream, or at least when it comes to adoption, is that not everyone wants to move to a rolling distribution. I think the concept of a rolling distribution is fine, but some enterprises either don't want to move to that, or maybe they're not ready to move to that. So those are the current issues when it comes to CentOS Stream, I don't really feel like anybody hated CentOS Stream when it was announced. It's just that what they took away from us is what's made a lot of people very frustrated. So what do you do about it? Well, what I'm going to do right now is go over several different options that you have at your disposal for what you should do about this situation. Should you migrate all of your servers to a different distribution? Well, yeah, you have to. Even if you move to CentOS Stream, that's technically a different distribution. But there's different scenarios here, and I'm going to go over several of them right now to give you guys a better understanding about what options you have at your disposal. So the first option probably goes without saying, but the first thing that you could consider is actually moving to CentOS Stream. Like I mentioned earlier, there's nothing wrong with it. Technically, it's a fine distribution and probably something you should check out. But the issue here is that when it comes to moving to CentOS Stream, that requires the most work, which is why I'm getting this out of the way first, because I know a lot of you out there are probably not wanting to move to CentOS Stream, or you're probably watching this video because you want to know what the other options are. But the thing is, when it comes to CentOS Stream, it's a completely different distribution. Actually, there's other distributions that I'm going to be going over in this video that are also different distributions. But CentOS Stream is a different distribution in every sense of the word. It doesn't even have the same goal that CentOS has had in the past. So when it comes to migrating to CentOS Stream, you'll find yourself doing more testing and more work. But if it's something that you want to do, then it is a path forward that you could consider. Anyway, I figured that I'd get CentOS Stream out of the way first. I mean, like I said, it is a viable option. It is a viable way forward, but it's going to be more work. But what are the other options that you could consider? Well, the second option that you could consider is migrating to Alma Linux OS. Alma Linux OS is a community-driven replacement for CentOS. Unlike CentOS Stream, Alma Linux is built from Red Hat sources, which means it's actually a drop-in replacement for CentOS 8. In fact, you can even do an in-place upgrade to Alma Linux from CentOS 8, so migrating to this distribution is actually easier than you might think. Sure, you'd have to do some testing, as always, However, due to the fact that there's a short window of time remaining until CentOS 8 reaches end of life, Alma Linux is absolutely a great choice. And best of all, it's a community-driven project that's owned by the community, so it's not going to go anywhere. Just like with CentOS, Alma Linux can be downloaded for free and deployed on however many servers you wish with no limitations. So if you're looking for a drop-in replacement for CentOS 8, then look no further than Alma Linux OS. Now, speaking of a drop-in replacement, Rocky Linux is also an option that you should consider as well, because like Alma Linux, it's actually built on Red Hat sources as well. So it's an enterprise distribution built from enterprise sources, and is definitely a worthy option to consider. Another aspect that's similar to Alma Linux OS is that Rocky Linux is also a community-driven project as well. 
Now, it might be confusing to some of you out there why the industry would need both Alma Linux and Rocky Linux, but honestly, I think it's a good thing because choice is always a good thing. You could check out Alma Linux OS, you could check out Rocky Linux, and then choose which one of the two you like the best. But those aren't the only two options when it comes to a drop-in replacement for CentOS 8. Oracle Linux makes the list as well. And you might not be aware of this, but Oracle Linux has been available for free since 2006. So with the current situation where we need to migrate away from CentOS 8, Oracle Linux is another contender that you might want to consider. And just like the others, this project also aims for 100% binary compatibility with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So with at least three choices to consider for a potential drop-in replacement for CentOS 8, Oracle Linux makes my list of considerations. At this point, I have one more item on my list when it comes to considerations for how to move forward away from CentOS 8. But before I get to that, let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite so far. Are you going to move to CentOS Stream? Do you have a favorite between Alma Linux OS, Rocky Linux, or Oracle? Or is there another distribution that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, the last option that I'm going to mention is extended lifecycle support for CentOS 8. And this service in particular is brought to us by TuxCare. And it's actually the easiest to adopt of all the ones that I mentioned because this is the only option on the list that doesn't involve moving to a different distribution. And with extended lifecycle support, TuxCare will take it upon themselves to provide you with security patches for CentOS 8 even after the end of life date. Now, it is a paid service, but it's worth it. With about two months to go until CentOS 8 stops receiving upstream support, you may not have time to migrate your servers to something else. Extended lifecycle support will give you the opportunity to migrate at your own pace instead of in a hurry. Now, full disclosure, TuxCare is a sponsor of Learn Linux TV, and they have been for quite some time now. But the reason why they're a sponsor is because I genuinely feel that their services are awesome and they have a lot to offer. They also have services like Kernel Care, and what that can do for us is live patch the running Linux kernel, so that way we don't have to reboot our server just because a kernel was updated. But they're also able to live patch shared libraries as well. And not to be outdone, they can live patch database servers, QEMU, and more which means that their services will enable you to effectively eliminate any need to reboot your Linux servers, which is awesome. And what's really awesome about this service is that it's actual stress relief for a lot of people. I mean, just think about it. A lot of IT administrators and CTOs out there are very stressed out about what to do about this news, about the fact that CentOS 8 is reaching end of life very soon. And with this service, you can migrate at your own pace which means you can relax, you could finish your testing, you don't have to hurry. I mean, let's face it, anything you do in IT in a hurry is potentially a bad idea because when you hurry, you know, things can go wrong, you could have some problems, but with this service, you can relax, you could take your time and migrate in a natural way that makes sense for your enterprise. If you want to check out extended lifecycle support for yourself, I'm going to put a link in the description below this video and you could click that link to find out more about the service. With all of that said, those were my recommended approaches for how to move forward in wake of the news about CentOS 8. What's your favorite? Are you going to use a drop-in replacement for CentOS 8? Are you going to move to CentOS Stream? Or are you going in a completely different direction altogether? Let me know in the comments down below this video. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Definitely click that like button if you like this video and consider sharing it with your friends, family, colleagues, pets, if they use computers, I don't judge. Share it with anyone that might find this information helpful. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.